Hello, I'm Lisa and welcome back to Linford Art Studio. We have an amazing art workshop today with a couple of really nice art makes. But just before we start, just a big thank you to all the posting, the pictures, everything that's been sent in or popped up on the YouTube or on the Facebook posts that you've been creating over the last few weeks following our tutorials. They are amazing. We've had them from local and worldwide. Keep them coming, guys. Okay, so today we're going to look at a cartoon superhero character and some amazing colourful scenes. Let's start with the cartoon character. This is the stuff you're going to need today. The artwork we're going to create today is going to be a fun cartoon scene using a character of your own choice. So you're going to use your imagination to create a superhero, a flying ballerina, a rocket man, a dinosaur, and we want them to zoom high into the sky, high into the clouds and let the ground drop below. So the art piece is all about perspective and that's a big word which means something can look far away, high, close and the perspective we're going to do today is close to our zooming character and the ground is going to look far away. Here is an example of what you're going to create. Okay, so you need to take your pencil and your paper and I'm going to show you how to break down your character so it looks like it's zooming high into the sky. Let's go. You're going to use your pencil to sketch these shapes to make your character. I'm going to do it in a black felt tip pen so you can see really clearly the shapes that I draw. Don't worry, you'll use your black pen at the end to highlight like a proper cartoon your character once we've coloured it in. Okay, so what you need to do is start with a circle in this corner. Well, it's almost like a shape of an egg. That's going to be the head. Now we need to get the body. So I'm going to do almost like an exclamation mark shape going all the way across horizontally down my page to the end. I'm going to leave the bottom open. That will be the body. Okay, so let's think what could we make this into? I'm going to make it into a superhero flying high above a city through the clouds. As I said, you might decide to do a flying crazy dinosaur or a fairy or a ballerina or maybe super mom. Yeah, let's have a look. So I'm going to put a neck onto my body. This is going to be great for my superhero chest plate. Let's do that. S for superhero. And again, you can use your imagination to decorate and design your superhero cartoon character's uniform or costume. I'm going to do an arm zooming up. They always have that arm shooting up to infinity and beyond. Okay, let's do an arm coming down here. So I'm doing triangle shapes now and then another triangle shape inside. That gives me the bend of my arm and I'm going to do a little half circle there. It looks like the hand is on the hip. Now I'm going to do those fancy pants that superheroes wear. Let's put those on. And I'm going to do a line right down the middle. Now can you see how I've now created the legs and that shape? The head's big, the shoulder's big because it's close to us, coming up towards us. We're almost in an aeroplane. But the feet are going smaller down, they're further away. That's your perspective you're doing. I'm going to put some shoes on my person and they're small look at those tiny little feet and I think we need a cape so let's draw a cape swooshing and waving to the side just like that I'm gonna have a nice superhero quiff let's do some ears which I'm gonna color in later and I'm gonna have a big superhero smile I'm gonna give him a little starburst on his smile because he's super. There he is, he's obviously saved somebody. I'm going to give him some eyes and you can do your favourite cartoon eyes. Pull those in, give him some eyebrows. He's looking amazing. And his nose. Now you can spend much more time creating your superhero hero, girl or boy or dinosaur 
let's have a look. So now we've got the shape going on. He's got his boots. He's whooshing, so we need some whoosh lines. So these are movement lines, and because he's gone whoosh up into the sky, the movement lines need to come down really sharp. I'm gonna do one off his arm, whoosh. Now, can you see how that makes him look fast? If he was wobbling like a jelly, I'd do rounded movement lines, but he's whooshing up into the sky. So let's put some clouds. Now, this is where you could use your imagination and do a crazy bird trying to get out of his way, or an aeroplane. I think mine's gonna be a bit of a silly superhero. There we go, so that clouds tell us, that helps us with our cartoon story, that he's up into the sky. I'm gonna do a bird here as well, to show. Now, how can we see that he's up in the sky and away from the ground? I'm gonna do a city, he's just zoomed out over the city, so at the bottom under the feet, I'm going to do these buildings and I'm sure you've all drawn cities before and I'm doing them quite small even though some might be a skyscraper or a church but I'm going to make them small just at the bottom and that will really give you the feel that he is zoomed up from this city put some windows in like that now we could make this story have some fire. Maybe this building here is on fire and there's some smoke. So let's do that fire and the smoke coming up. So now we know where he's zooming up into the sky and he's gonna zoom back down to save. Maybe we'll do somebody calling out the window, help. So you can make this into a complete story. Let's give a speech bubble. Now when you do a speech bubble, Good tip, write the word first and then put your bubble around the word and it will fit perfectly. Help! There we go. I think we're there. What a true cartoon needs now is some great colours and some great patterns to make this stand out. Once you've drawn it in pencil, go over like I have in your black pen to make it stand out like a cartoon. I think that looks quite cool. Right, I'm gonna use some Posca pens. If you haven't got Posca pens, use your felt tips. And if your felt tips have all dried up after nine weeks of being locked down, why don't we try some coloured pencils? Remember, the colour needs to be bright like a cartoon. Let's go. Now that my character is coloured in, it's really fun. What I need to do is the background. I'm gonna leave the clouds white, and when you go over with your black pen, they will really stand out. So how can I get this background colourful, quick? I'm gonna look at doing what they do in the comics, and I'm gonna use dots and spots, like a pattern, to make the background really funky. Here we go.
So, wasn't that quick? I love the dots. I've taken some of the dots off the page to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I've got complete dots here. Some have gone halfway off the page. And also I've gone in between the arms because I can see through the arms to the sky. And I've done little half dots around the cape. So it really looks like he's flying through the sky. I can leave the clouds. Now all I need to do is color in my city. I can do it really colorful, like a rainbow, if I want to keep that brightness going or I could do it black and dark as it goes further down and obviously I need my my little scene here where this person needs some help from this burning fire so let's get that coloured in lovely all coloured in I've got a dramatic scene here it's bright and colourful he's looking really cool because he's going to save the day and I filled in my city what I need to do is maybe now, and you'll probably, if you've done it all in pencil, you need to use your black felt tip pen or your black marker and go round the line so it really stands out clearly. I've even put a shine in my superhero's hair because he's so cool. Okay, let's finish it off. And there he is, looking pretty cool, saving the day. I look forward to seeing what you create. Now let's look at doing some painting and we're going to do a landscape, a view or a scene. Here is the stuff that you're going to need for your painting today. For inspiration of how we're going to do our landscapes today and to make sure that we're going to do something big, bold and colourful, take a look at this artist. Cézanne was a French artist who lived over a hundred years ago and he loved to paint the French landscape and he used bright colours, not too many greens, he kept it hot and warm and we're going to have a look at doing a painting like one of his. Take a look at his picture of the French countryside. The first thing I like to do is tape my piece of paper to a piece of cardboard to give it a really nice neat frame at the end. So take your masking tape, a little bit into your paper, all the way around, giving it a really nice white frame trim at the end when we've got done all our messy painting and we take it off gently, we'll end up with that nice trim. So let's just pop it on, nice and even. You can get Dad to help you do this if you're struggling to keep a nice edge. There we go. So I put my tape all the way round. Now I can start. Take your pencil. I'm going to draw a landscape from my imagination and I'm going to do fields. So I'm going to start by doing the top of my fields. This is going to be my sky. I'm then going to come down and use a field here. And again, I'm just making it up, making my imagination. I'm going to do another line coming across and before it finishes across there, I'm going to bring another one in. Now that feels like a field. If I'd have carried the line on, it would have been a little bit like a spider's web and I want it to feel like fields. So I'm gonna bring this one down. Now I'm gonna change my landscape and I'm gonna bring it straight across in a straight line. So what I've got now is definitely some hills and some fields that are a little bit further back. This bit here, I'm gonna have fields with maybe cows in or a farm. So let's create that. Very gently, I'm going to do a little line there and I'm going to put a little smallish farm in. Give it a little door, a little chimney. Maybe it's got a little side building, just shapes. I'm just drawing rectangles and squares and little triangles. I'm not putting trees in, I'm not putting any detail in. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a line here. And that's where I might do some grass because we're gonna make it feel we're right up against the grass later. That's it. This is my sky. Here is my hill. I've done some crisscross lines on different shapes and I put a little farm in. Now let's color. Now you're gonna need your paints. If you're using acrylic paints, take some tin foil and put a selection of colors on your tin foil. If you're using watercolours, then great, just make sure you add lots and lots of water and make them into puddles of paint to use. However, there's a catch. I want you to choose one colour that you're not going to use. Choose a bright colour. 
So these are my colours that I'm going to paint my picture and there's no blue in my palette because I've decided I'm going to use blue with my oil pastel. So put all your paints out and keep the blue back. You might decide you want to use blue and you want red to be your special colour. So choose one colour and leave that to the side. You're not going to paint with it. So in your watercolour dishes, choose the colour, blue, and you use all the other colours except for blue. Now you're saying there's a sky, but not all skies have to be blue, do they? Remember, we're using our imagination and we're doing things a little bit different. So I've decided that I'm not having any blue paint, which means I'll be able to choose a blue crayon or a blue oil pastel later. So that's important. Okay, let's start painting. I've got lots of brushes to paint today and they're nice and chunky, but I'm also gonna use my fingers. And I'm gonna start with my sky. I can't do a blue sky, I've already decided that's gonna be my color. So I'm going to pick up some yellow on my finger and some red on my finger and I'm going to pop it on in little dots. I'm also then on another finger going to pick up some white and I'm going to pop that on as well. Give your fingers a little wipe and now what you do is you start blending. You can go right over your tape, start blending, you use one or two fingers, keep it going. If you're using watercolours, plop the paint on maybe with your brush and then use your fingers and keep dropping your fingers into some water and that will stretch it. Now I fancy a little bit more yellow in mine, so I'm gonna go back into my paint with my finger, pick up the yellow and spread that through. There we go. Oh, it feels so nice to do, nice and messy. It's sort of giving me a really bright sunset. Let's pick a bit more white up because as the sunset or the sky comes down to the land, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna mix my white and hopefully, if I've got it right, I could get a pink tone. What do you think? Let's go. Yeah, and I quite like the stripes. It looks like a really spicy sunset. Great. So you can do that with your watercolours or with your acrylics. Look at my hands. Great. Let's clean them off. Now I'm going to use my brush. So I've had fun with my sunset. I'm not allowed to use blue. So that means my land is going to look like a really sunny, hot day. I'm going to mix my colours. I'm going to start in the distance. I'm going to go with a purple. Some things, things a little bit further back, whether it's the sea, whether it's a mountain, can look a little bit blue or a little bit purple. So because my mountain is a little bit further away, I'm going to do it purple. I'm putting the paint on thick and if I was using watercolours, I'd add lots of water to really get it inky. Let's play that in. So all that to me is my mountain. But it just needs a little bit of something else so don't be afraid to pick up a different colour let's go for a little bit of the green and put it in with it do you remember like we did with our fingers let the brush spread the two together we don't want it to go brown so just let it do its thing and then leave it there we go so there's my bluey green mountains in the back now I want to go for some really super bright colours so I'm going to pick all my reds and oranges I'm going to have a bright orange field now, I haven't got orange in my tube, so I wonder, how do we make orange? I'm going to mix some yellow, and I'm going to mix a little bit of red, and I'm going to get that lovely, hot, orangey colour. And this field here is going to be orange, but again, I'm not just going to block it in. I'm going to pick up another brush, I'm going to pick up a nice bit of neat yellow, and I'm going to put it that straight on top, and I'm just going to let it do its thing as it comes together, because that now looks exciting. If it had been just orange, that's okay, but let's mix it up a bit. There we go. So I've got my purpley green sort of hills. I've got my lovely field here growing. Now we need some more colours. What could we go for? Let's go for a pale yellow. Maybe this is hay. And let's do that in the middle. And I'm brushing it down, filling it in. Now if I do a wave as I fill it in, it will make the field feel as if it's moving, as if the hay is moving along. So I'm going to sort of do a wave on this one, a bit like the sea, but it'll just make it look like swaying hay. Great, nice. Now, I'm going to go for a super bright red field. This could be a field of flowers or poppies. 
Now again, I quite like how we've been mixing two colours together, so I wonder what colour we could put here. Let's try a little bit of the purple, because as it mixes, it will make the red a little bit darker. So that will feel like a shadow in that field. Maybe there's a cloud going over. So I've just mixed the purple with it, put it on, and now I've got a light red and a super bright. Why don't we do a third colour? Why don't we pick up the orange that we made earlier and just skim it over the top? What does that give us the look? Looks like it's glowing now. There we go. Great. So we've got some really bright fields going on. Let's bring it down again now. I think we need a green field, but this green, this green's a bit fake, isn't it? It's a bit just plain. I think we've done a really good job of mixing some colours. So let's see what happens if I mix the green with some yellow. Will that make a nicer, brighter green for me? Let's have a look. Let's mix it together. Look at that. That's like a lime fresh green. Yeah, definitely going to use that. Let's go for it. So let's get it nice and wet. If it's a watercolour, if it's acrylic, keep it nice and rich. Yay. So this field behind the house has got some nice green to it. So this is probably grass. Now what will happen is your painting will start to look like sort of a patchwork quilt of coloured shapes. That's okay. And don't worry if it goes over. It hasn't got to be neat. It'll give it some movement. I like that green, but I think let's go for a little bit more of the yellow mix. Let's see if we can make a slightly different green. Wow, I've put more yellow in and now I've got a really bright colour. There's a field um, of crops called rapeseed and it's bright yellow. You've probably seen it on your walks and I think this feels like that. Now what I'm doing is I'm flicking and flacking. I'm not neat. I'm letting it just all come together. Get rid of all the white. We don't want any white paper showing so try and cover that. Now what I might do is turn my brush over, scratch into that look. And if I scratch into it, and if I put that paint on wet enough, and if I put it on thick enough, it will give me some marks. Now I feel like I've got some grass going on in that field. That gives that something different, doesn't it? You can go small and big, keep going. There we go, lovely. So that feels interesting because it's got texture. Now we're right at the beginning. I wanna bring some of the oranges back because remember it's about doing a landscape like Cezanne. He used all those bright oranges, those bright yellows because he was in a hot sunny space. And our weather has been hot, so I think I'm going to copy him. There we go. And I definitely want to make some orange. Now, my orange is gone again, so I need to make sure I use the red and yellow to make myself that spicy orange. There we go. And now I'm going to finish with a nice orange feel on that corner there. Wow. There we go. Okay, so we've kept it nice and bright. Lots of patterns, we've got the sky, we've got the hills, uh, we've got the coloured fields, just got to do that farm. Now, if you use brown, that's going to be really boring, isn't it? And the whole scene has been about colour. So I'm going to look at what I've got, I'm going to use the purple, I might mix it up with a different colour just to darken it down. Remember, I've got no blue in this picture. So if I make a brown, maybe I want it a little bit more red brown or more purple brown because the joy is not using black, not using brown, and obviously the colour of your choice. Now you might have decided not to use red, so then your picture might have lots of blues in it. And remember, you can have light blue, greeny blue, aqua blue, dark blue. Okay. Now, again, with my building, I haven't been too precise. I've just made a rectangle and a triangle and a shape. I'm going to use the purple neat to be the door and I'm going to just use a little bit maybe for a window and maybe the roof. Just give it a little bit of something. But again, it's just a shape, a blob. Good, we finished. Now we need that to dry. You can use a hairdryer or you can come back after you've had a little snack. If you look at his picture, he's got one colour that outlines all the shapes, all the fields, any trees around the building, and he's used a bright blue. I think that's why I chose blue too. 
So because you've got that colour now that you haven't used, and you might have chosen red, for example, or green, you can now make your picture stand out by outlining it, not in boring old black, but with a bright colour, and it will keep your picture really bright and bubbly. Let's go. I'm going to take an oil pastel, and you may use a crayon, or even a Posca pen. If you want to do pens, then please feel free to use a felt tip or a Posca pen. Okay, so I'm going to use my blue and I'm going to go around the edges and I'm pressing on really hard. Now, when you're using oil pastels, you need to press on and it feels like the pastel is melting under your fingers. And what you're doing is you're turning it into paint. It's melting and turning into paint. I'm doing all those edges to my fields in this blue. I'm pressing on nice and firm. And I'm creating the edges of my hills and my fields. This will really make them stand out. If you've chosen a colour and it, perhaps it's not bright enough, change it. There we go, so that's that mountain range coming in. Can you see how my blue is making this stand out and it's quite chunky and bright. And the last thing I need to do is my building. Now, your pastel might be a bit chunky, your crayon might be a bit chunky, so break it in half. Be brave. You get a nice sharp edge, then you've got two pastels. Don't panic, it doesn't matter about them being broken. So now we can really use the edge of the pastel, nice and sharp, to do the building. Now, I've taken a light blue. Because I haven't used any blues, I've decided that the dark blue looks great, but maybe the light blue might give me a highlight. And I'm just gonna put a little bit onto this building. And I might do a little bit on the blue line here. Not all of them, I'm just gonna choose because it'll give it a different glow. And maybe on this here, right in the corner, maybe I need some long bits of grass to show me that I'm really close to this picture. So look, if I was standing at the front of the picture, this grass would feel bigger than the field behind it. I know that feels funny to draw it, but if you do, and remember, not all grass is straight, it bends and there's short bits and there's wobbly bits. But if I now keep going just in this corner, I'm not gonna do it along the bottom like a fringe, I'm just gonna just do bits in this corner like this. Now that feels really close. Let's put a few dark ones in as well, because light and dark will make it look 3D. There we go, I think we're done. The best bit is peeling off the tape. Now I've taken the tape off and all the way around I've got a nice white trim and that really frames this bright, colorful picture. I really enjoyed that and I hope you did too. Well done. And finally, the toilet roll challenge. How about if this week we combine our toilet roll challenge with the great piece of art you've just created? Let's take those colours and those paints we had earlier and we're going to paint the toilet roll. Pop it onto your fingers so you can hold it and paint it any way you want. I'm going to use the colours from my picture and I'm going to stripe it roughly and then I'll dry it. So let's have a go. So I'm going to start with a nice purple and I'm going to keep it nice and thick. Again, if you're using watercolours, just keep adding water to your pot of watercolour to make it bright and inky rather than pale and faded. You might want to use felt tips, but I think using up the paint will make the connection to the toilet roll to the painting. And then I'm going to stripe that lovely spicy orange that we made earlier by mixing the red and the yellow. And I'm going to do a nice stripe of that all the way around. It's quite useful when it's on your fingers like this because you can twist and turn it as you paint. I'm not going to worry about overlapping the paint. Remember we had fun with the painting like that. Now I think I need a little bit of the super, super yellow and I do actually want to finish with some of that vibrant green so I'm just going to do a smaller stripe of the yellow all the way around. Great, now I've got room for that vibrant green or a little stripe all the way around like that nice and colorful i want it to match the picture that we've done in the art workshop today there we go 
Once you've painted it, pop it somewhere to dry. Okay, so I've come back, it's nice and dry. I'm gonna use the blue, like I did in my painting, just to draw some lines. But what we're gonna do with this is we're going to fold up our artwork like a scroll and we're gonna put it inside the tube and we're gonna give this as a gift. So this will protect your painting, it will create a scroll and then on the outside in my blue, or the color that you chose, I'm gonna write to mom. Let's go. And I'm gonna to put to my mom with, and I'm gonna draw a heart for love. Now you might be giving it to a teacher, a neighbor, your granddad, your best friend that you've missed. There we go. And I'm gonna do some stripes because I outlined my fields and I like the idea of that it matches my artwork. There we go. Right, there we go. Ready, designed and who it's going to on there. Let's roll the artwork and pop it inside. I've rolled my artwork, I've put it inside my presentation tube, I've got my design on it, it matches. What a fun idea to give as a gift. Well done. Take care, keep safe and keep being creative. Bye.